It all started on the 27th of November 2008. We were contacted by the French National Office for Hunting and Wildlife, the ONCFS, which had received a call from an individual who had spotted a young lynx that was obviously lost and in difficulty roaming around in a village. In conjunction with the ONCFS, we tried to capture the lynx, which had clearly been separated from its mother. We managed to capture it relatively easily and immediately noted that the animal was injured and suffering from malnutrition. Poachers were most likely responsible for killing the mother and inflicting the wounds on the animal. When we picked him up, he'd probably not eaten for three or four weeks. In collaboration with the French Research Institute for Development and the CNRS, we decided to equip the animal with an Argos transmitter, since this was a fantastic opportunity for us to obtain precise information about the lynx's habitat and movements, how well it reintegrated its natural environment and its lifespan in the wild. Fario the lynx instinctively rediscovered his natural instincts and living habits, away from the prying eyes of man. These wild animals are nomadic and live in areas that are often inaccessible to humans. This makes it difficult for scientists to observe them and perpetuates the mysteries surrounding the way they live. In Europe, storks are protected, and we have a good understanding of their living environment, so we can basically consider they are not threatened as a species. In Africa, however, storks are targeted by poachers, and their habitats are gradually disappearing. As such, it was important to quantify and qualify the pressure on the species and its living environment in Africa. I started to study ospreys since they are a rare species, which reappeared in France just a few years ago. We'd already studied the bird's interaction with its environment in forests, but there was something we knew nothing about, namely its migration patterns. In fact, ospreys are highly migratory. So, we started studying elephant seals to try and understand what had happened, not today, but around 30 years ago. In the 1970s, in the space of a decade, half of the elephant seal population disappeared, and we didn't really understand what had happened during that period to explain such a population decrease, quite simply because we did not know enough about their interaction with their environment. It's true that we know a certain amount about the species. For example, we know that this type of shark mainly lives in temperate and cold waters in both hemispheres. However, other aspects concerning its biology and ecology remain a bit of a mystery. We know little about its movements and migrations. In addition, we have very little information about how the shark reproduces. For example, we don't know when the reproduction occurs or where the births take place. A, system a revolutionary new location and data collection system would enable the scientific community to monitor an animal's movements, even when it could not be seen, and to study its behavior and interaction with its environment. With Argos, dreams would become reality. The system operates as follows. Transmitters are fastened to an animal, for example, a turtle, a bird, or a land mammal. To tag and monitor these sharks, we're going to use MK10 satellite-linked transmitters. We program the transmitters to collect information at different time intervals, for example, temperature, depth, and luminosity, every minute. The data are recorded by the device every minute, and we can also program the transmitter to drop off the animal on any particular day. When the satellite passes over the transmitter, it records the message and relays it back to an antenna, as soon as the antenna is in range. We have around 60 antennas around the world, which relay the messages to the CLS computing center. Once the center in Toulouse has processed the message and calculated the location, it is sent back to the user or the scientist concerned via our internet links and websites. We receive the information in bar chart format on the computer and can then analyze the shark's trajectory. The result of a Franco-American partnership between Kness and NOAA, Argos was a genuine technological exploit that went into service at the end of the 1970s.
dans un contexte de coopération internationale, le CNES a donc CNES designed and built the Argos system within the framework of an international partnership. The agency was the system architect and the contracting authority, in that it financed the electronic instruments that would be installed on the satellites of our international partners, notably in the United States, but also in Europe with Ermetsat, as well as in India. CNES delegated the system's operation to its subsidiary CLS in order to meet users' needs. Each day, a million messages are sent by 20,000 Argos transmitters deployed on land, ice or at sea. The scientists involved work above all for the love of nature and are concerned about its vulnerability. There is a specific transmitter for each animal species, suited to its weight and shape, and which never exceeds 3% of the animal's weight. We've just finished fitting two transmitters to two young seagulls. It's the first time we've done this. It will enable us to find out where they spend the winter and where they go next summer. This is important because we know absolutely nothing about their movements. Although we've learned a lot about the adults, the young birds leave the colony and don't come back until the age of two or three. And we have no idea where they go during that period. We use the Argos tracking system for two reasons. Firstly, we wanted to validate a method for raising young lynxes in order to provide another solution to the recurrent problem of young orphan lynxes in the Jura Mountains. Secondly, the authorization to release the lynxes into nature is subject to a regulatory obligation to monitor the animals. We must intervene if there is a problem, for example, if the animal struggles to adapt to life in the wild or attacks domestic livestock. From the fathomless depths of the oceans to the highest mountain summits or inaccessible areas in extreme frozen regions, the data obtained from Argos transmitters is invaluable. The transmitters enable scientists to extend their observation to previously unexplored environments while respecting the animal's well-being and integrity. This enabled us to discover that the bird had travelled across France in five days. It had followed the course of the River Loire and continued south to the Pyrenees. It flew over the mountains in just a few minutes on a sunny day, then crossed Spain from east to west, although we don't yet really understand why, and finally reached the Tagus River, where it spent seven months. It then followed the river downstream to the estuary. I was able to characterize the roosts thanks to the Argos transmitters. I noted that 70% of the roosts were dead trees. In Africa they use bushfires to make the vegetation grow back stronger, but these fires are also a threat to the roosts. Storks are very selective, and if there are no more roosts, they are forced to move. So within the framework of my study, I asked the Water and Forestry Department if they could establish protection areas around the roosts. This costs absolutely nothing. It just means clearing a 10-meter perimeter with a machete around the trees to protect them from bushfires. Of course, the idea behind this is to create marine protected areas in order to try and protect the ocean environment a bit more. Around 50% of the elephant seal population that reproduces in the Kerguelen Islands, in a sub-Antarctic area, depends on the Antarctic area for food. During the 1960s and at the start of the 1970s, the summer ice pack shrank by around 25%, so there was less food for the animals on which elephant seals prey. Consequently, the size of the population decreased according to the available food resources. But Argus's applications are not limited to the animal world. They also collect data about polar ice and the oceans, whose behavior is studied through specific research programs. Accurate measurements recorded over long periods of time provide tangible information about changes in the oceans. The Argo program uses 3,000 of these autonomous robots, which are deployed in all the oceans to measure the temperature and salinity of the upper ocean layer. 
so they descend to a depth of 2,000 meters and come back up every 10 days to send their data via Argos satellites. In this case, the program deploys transmitter buoys on ice. The idea of these buoys is to assess the quantity and thickness of ice in the Arctic. Using conventional radar imaging, we can obtain the surface area of the ice, but we don't know how old or thick the ice is. So the key idea of the International Arctic Boy Program, IABP, is to divide the Arctic Ocean up into squares like a sort of white chocolate bar. We put one of the buoys on each square and can then calculate the lifespan of the ice by monitoring the lifespan of the buoys. When we know the lifespan of the ice, we can create a computer model to estimate its thickness based also on our knowledge of the snowfalls. Thanks to the IABP program and the Argos boys, we realized that the ice cap has shrunk much quicker than forecasts had given us to believe. Today the ice cap has shrunk to the level forecast for 2050. This information has allowed us to alert the public and politicians about the situation and we hope that this will push people to take quicker action. Argo also helps us to understand better how extreme weather events such as hurricanes develop and to monitor them. If you can forecast future ocean conditions and the future climate, you can forecast electricity consumption in winter. You can also understand the effects on agriculture and know if there will be a monsoon or not, etc. Based on our understanding of the ocean and the climate, we will be able to develop an enormous amount of socially oriented applications in the future. Climate change and biodiversity are two of the major challenges facing today's society. Everything we have learned thanks to Argos is extremely useful for helping us to decide on measures to be taken. Take king penguins, for example. Thanks to Argos, we have discovered that they move to the Arctic in winter. Drawing on this information, and again thanks to Argos, we noted that the temperature in their winter location determines their probability of survival. An increase of just 0.3 degrees Celsius is enough to reduce their lifespan by 10%. This means that the surface temperature of the sea has a significant impact on marine production, since a change of just a tenth of a degree can have a major effect. In other words, penguins are an indicator of climate change. This really brings home the potential impact on future generations and highlights the importance of combating climate change. It's a very powerful argument. Et nous montre l'importance de lutter contre le changement climatique, c'est un argument très fort. For the last 30 years, Argos has been monitoring the Earth and its wildlife, measuring the vitality of animal populations and providing the world with information to protect them. Argos changes the way we look at things.